And now Seattle is coming. They're official, officially joined the NHL, as Daniel put in the Google Doc. I love this. Seattle officially released the Kraken. Yes. They made their final expansion payment a few days ago. And Alex has the question in the doc. I'm going to steal it right here. Who are the teams that they are going to take advantage of? So as Vegas did with good old Columbus, uh, Florida was a big one. Uh, Tuck from Minnesota. Um, Who are some teams that you guys can see um, Seattle messing with? And I'll start with Alex because it is his question. I, I just have this sneaky suspicion that it's going to be Vancouver. And I don't think it's going to be through the, just the expansion draft. You're on you are on the offer sheet route really hard here. I think uh, here's – I'll tell you the reason why. Because I think that we all expect that the GMs are going to be smarter this time around. But we have to remember, like, the cap – number one, that just, that just doesn't happen. And the cap also isn't going up, mm-hmm. right? So they're, they all sign these contracts with the expect, expectation that, hey, the cap's going up – over the next few years. And unfortunately now it is not. So I think they're going to get picks again. Like they're, this is someone's going to get screwed over. And I, I just have this feeling it's going to be Vancouver. That I could see that like they, like Jim Benning panics. <laughs> and then he's like, I'll give you like, I don't know, another first round pick and a prospect not to, not to select this guy or not to offer sheet Elias Patterson. That or another thing that, that Alex mentioned last night on the uh, the viewing party was with their pick, like they, they're in a position they get a low cues, and it's just that that adds to that rivalry already. That'd be pretty sick. Um, Daniel, who what, what teams are you looking at? For me, I think it's going to be Carolina. I think they're going to miss a significant piece, but I think like it's not going to hurt them as much, but I think it's still going to hurt them based on like how their current core is. Because things have been good, right? But at the same time, they still have to sign a bunch of guys. And there's still that expectation of we still have to fix our goaltending. So that's another need. And then the second thing is to, like, they have a lot of, like, young guys who are on the cusp. Because I, I don't know where they're going to really fit a lot of these guys where, you know, they have the Brady Shea. But at the same time, like, you're going to also have, like, what do you, when you have, like, a Brady Shea or Jake Garner on your lineup, where are you going to put a Jake Bean? I know that they kind of fix things with the Hayden Flurry trade, but it's it's another it's another thing to look at where what happens if you just again when we mentioned the, the run out of time kind of idea that the Hurricanes have so many moving pieces that I don't think they're gonna be able to keep the band together. Even with that, like okay, so you deal with Flurry, but then what do you do with Yanni Hawk and Paul? <laughs> but you know, it doesn't matter because listen, they'll lose a defenseman probably, and then they'll randomly get one over the summer and they'll be fine. Exactly. Now, I, I I put three teams just in case. Um, Sounds like Daniel. Oh, wow. Yeah, uh, just in case. Um, and I, I actually, it's kind of the same scenario. I have Minnesota first mm-hmm. because they've got three defensemen that already have no move clauses and none of them are Matt Dumba. And it's kind of been the worst kept secret that, you know, they don't, we don't quite know what's going, with, what's going on with Dumba. And he's just kind of sitting there right for the taking. I also said Anaheim because looking at the amount of defensemen that they have to, that they have, you don't want to lose like Fowler or Lindholm, right? You would expect that maybe there's a respect thing to protect Ryan Getzlav. Though, I mean, looking at it, there, there are some good defensemen that, that might be available in Anaheim. And then um, I just said it just like, this was just in case you guys said these two teams. I said Montreal just for the fact that they're probably losing a defenseman. Or probably Jake Allen, and I really don't want to lose Jake Allen because I really like him. I really like Jake Allen. Okay. Just a thought here. You don't trust Caden Primo yet? He's young. Let him develop. Uh, what else? Just a thought here about Ryan Getzlav. You think he pulls the move that no, – not that it's a, it was a bad thing, but that what Jason Spezza did, that like he's only staying in Anaheim and that's about it. You, just take, me, I'm, you take me, I'm retiring. <laughs> yeah, that or he he goes and like signs like Legman in Vegas because that was a thing. Uh, that's true. 
Yeah. I mean, I don't know if Vegas should do that. I don't know where he fits in, but it's Vegas and they'll Somewhere. make it work. Well, it's okay. They're going to trade a bunch of pieces for Jack Eichel and then they can fit Ryan Getzlaff in the bottom six. Yeah. And then, <laughs> and, you know what? To help send the center depth, they'll send William Carlson over to Minnesota and they'll make a thing. And then they flip Flurry to went to, um, to, to Pittsburgh and it's a whole thing. Like it, exactly. it works. Exactly. It works. Oh, you could, yeah. You could bring back your, uh, your, was it four team scenario? Yes. Exactly. Yes. 